Detroit wins a playoff game for the first time in a generation, over a generation. An entire generation has entered the world since the last time the Lions won a playoff game. And they beat Matthew Stafford and the Rams by one point. One point, 24 to 23 on a Sunday night. The Lions, if you include the regular season, are now 13 and 5. They end a nine game postseason losing streak. Holy Megatron and Barry Sanders, Batman, the longest in NFL history. The nine game postseason losing streak that dated all the way back to 1992. I was a child in 1992. The last. Time the Cowboys won a playoff game, and uh, they last time they lost a home playoff game was 1992. They two years later they uh, they had another game, and they've not had one since then. So Detroit will now have a second home playoff game. Thank you very much. First time in franchise history, which that's not saying much. The Lions don't normally make the playoffs, and they will host the winner of tonight's game, the Tampa Bay football team playing host to the Philadelphia football team. The Eagles favored on the road in that game despite not having their top receiver in the lineup. And that'll be in the divisional round next Sunday. But the better story is in the losing locker room. And so that is where we begin. Let us discuss the question, what went wrong for Matthew Stafford and the Rams? Down the stretch. What what happened? So I've got Fumble Ruski. Cotton candy and the big red button. The big red button. We'll combine all of these things together, and we are going to make some Detroit pizza. Now, I, I in my big board of pizza, Detroit pizza is not very high up. I'm a Chicago pizza guy. But there's a lot of hype for the Detroit pizza. I have nothing against Detroit pizza. I would eat it if you gave it to me, but it's not one of my favorite pizzas. All right, so again, f- we'll combine all these things together. So A... The question, what went wrong for Matthew Stafford and the Rams down the stretch? Well, in part, it was a zebra problem. It was a zebra problem. And I'm not going to be that guy. I'm just going to really point out what happened. And maybe you're okay with it. Maybe you think it's fine. But it happened. There's no disagreement that it happened. The Rams had the ball down by a point. They were matriculating the ball down the field. All the Rams needed was a field goal to take the lead late fourth quarter in Motown. The Rams went on a six-play, 58-yard drive to the Detroit 44-yard line. They were in really good shape. But 420 left on the clock. That's Coop's favorite time on the clock. 420 on the clock. Matthew Stafford looked deep downfield to Puka Nakua at the Lion 26-yard line, and the pass was incomplete. The referee, though, here's where the pivot point of the game was. The referee pulled a fumble Ruski. He fumbled with his whistle. He fumbled with the penalty flag. He didn't call anything. Lost in the haze, the referee got sweaty palms. He had flop sweat on his forehead, and the referee chose not, not to call a clear and obvious pass interference penalty on number one in your program, but number one in the penalty box, the defensive back, Cameron Sutton, who held a foul. Call the foul. Uh, Cameron Sutton held the jersey, a handful of Puka Nakua jersey, before the ball arrived. Now, I checked the NFL rule book. Illegal. It says it right there, the official NFL rule book. You're not allowed to do that before the pass arrives. Should have been a first and 10 at the Detroit 26-yard line. A chip shot field goal to take the lead. Rams could have run more clock, forced the Lions to burn timeouts. Instead, bupkis. Is it true? Is it true that that was a makeup call, a makeup call from the officials for what happened in Dallas? The Cowboys and the Lions. Remember, they were duking it out there, the phantom non report penalty in that game. The Lions get away with a clear pass interference. In fact, there were several other calls that could have been called pass interference. The referees look the other way. It's the only way, the only way they were able to slow down. The Rams clearly better at wide receiver than the Detroit defensive secondary. And in this uh, particular game, uh, the referees allowed the Lions to, to get away with it. And so the Lions advance. Congratulations. You had the 12th man on your side there, the Zebras. Now, page two. Uh, did you buy into the narrative, the media-driven narrative, about this being Jared 
Goff's revenge against the Rams that he squared the books up by winning this game. So on my side, I'll go first here. The answer is no. That is what I call jibber-jabber is what I call it. Jibber-jabber. It is fluffy cotton candy. It's fluff. If you gave Sean McVay and the Rams 100 chances for a mulligan, say, okay, we're not going to trade Jared Goff for Matthew Stafford. We'll hold on to our first-round pick. Matt, and I don't want to speak for Sean McVay, but I will. 100 out of 100 times, Sean McVay would say, you know what? I'd still make the trade. You know why? The Rams got it right. The Rams got it right 100%, not even up for debate. Jared Goff is simply not as good as Stafford. Even if the Lions get to the Super Bowl this year, it doesn't change that reality. Period. Stop. The Rams forever won that trade because they won a Super Bowl with Matthew Stafford leading the way. And Jared Goff, even if the Lions win, is not going to be the reason the Lions win. He'll be along for the ride, just like the caboose. Just like the caboose at the end of the train is along for the ride. Uh, Not the steam engine. Not the steam engine. Matthew Stafford was the steam engine. Jared Goff barely got by a Ram team that wasn't even supposed to be in the playoffs, and everyone told me it was terrible. They were horrible. And yet the Lions, this big, bad Lion team, was barely able to get by and needed some assistance from a phantom non-call, a non-call on a clear P.I. against Puka Nakua. Last word. Let's play the thumbs-up, thumbs-down game. One of our callers from... North Carolina is very good at this game, so let's play thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you trust, thumbs up, thumbs down, do you trust the Dan Campbell Lions going forward based on what you saw in the game against the Rams? So that would be a thumbs down on this side. Now I have nothing against the Lions, and maybe I'll even pick the Lions depending on what the point spread is in their game upcoming. That aside, I I do not have faith in the Detroit football team. I don't, and the reason I don't I'll tell you why. I watched the game. That's why I, I don't have faith in the Lions. Uh, and I just mentioned him. I'll mention him again. It bears repeating for those of you in the back of the room that aren't paying attention. Jared Goff, two words, Jared Goff. Right? The game against the Rams is a textbook example of the underlying condition for the Lions. Detroit's offensive strategy in the second half, holding on to a lead, was essentially to play hide the quarterback. Hide the quarterback. Jared Goff attempted nine passes more than you did, and I did combined after halftime. That's it. He had nine passes in the second half. The Lions, as a team against a a Ram defense that was getting torched in the first half, and and supposedly he's not that good, everyone tells me. The, The Lions scored three points over the final 30 minutes of the game against that Rams defense. And the the recipe is there. Everyone knows how to mess with Jared Goff. If you can get pressure on Jared Goff, he will inevitably end up hitting the big red button, which will activate what? That will activate the self-destruct mechanism. The big red button does that. We've all seen that in movie and TV shows. You hit the big red button, that's a self-destruct button. And uh, Goff, uh, that's the problem. Now, just like all these other system quarterbacks, Brock Purdy with the 49ers, Dakota Prescott. If everything else is perfect, you can win. You can. The Rams got to a Super Bowl with Jared Goff, and he wasn't any good. And the Lions could get to a Super Bowl. But in order to win it, everything's got to be perfect. Everything's got to be perfect with a guy like Jared Goff. But, uh, again, to answer the question, do you trust Dan Campbell's Lions? No, I don't because of Jared Goff. I, I just I can't go there. Can't wrap my head around it. 